I've been so blown away by Zheyun's B and G series of video lights that I've reviewed lately that I wanted to keep the good times rolling and in this video I'm checking out this, the B300. It's 300 watts if the name wasn't obvious, by colour, all-in-one video light that's priced at Zheyun's usual double-take worthy low price. I can't help but feel a little bit concerned for companies like Aperture with their uh, bread and butter 300 watt series. So how does this perform? What's the build quality like? What's the user experience like? I'm just gonna, you know, riff and give you my honest opinion on it. And just to let you know, I'm not gonna keep this. I'm actually gonna give this away to one of my Patreon backers. And so if you'd like the chance to win this, uh, you can find the link down below. And um, it's really inexpensive to be a backer. It's just, you know, it's the cost of a cup of coffee per month. And it really just helps to support the channel to do competitions like this. I get to, you know, I get to get gear like this and then give it away to people and um, it's just kind of win-win for everyone. So if that's of interest, do check it out, it's below. I have also timestamped everything down below so you can just skip around to the bits you want. And if you're not a subscriber to this channel, it would really make my day if you could just reach down and hit that subscribe button. Um, it just uh, puts a smile on my face and I appreciate it in advance, I thank you. So kicking off with the features and as I said before, it is by color with a useful temperature range of 2700 to 6500 Kelvin. And really, I feel like at this point of the video, it's worth just mentioning that the B300 is really quite similar in almost every single way to Zheyun's B500 light, except for um, the output and the price. Otherwise, you know, the form factor, um, the weight and size is very similar. Uh, and all the other features, functionality, they're all the same. And um, that's worth bearing in mind. It's an all-in-one product with no separate power or controller unit. And it's kind of tiny. I'll put the dimensions here when you consider the output that it's capable of. And speaking of output, the peak brightness from this is 12,400 lux at 5,500 Kelvin. That's measured at one meter just with no reflector, just the bare bulb. And to give that figure some context, well, we'll be doing that in just a bit, but let's just say for the moment that that is healthy. As for the color accuracy side of things, I feel like my regular viewers are gonna be getting a bit bored of me harping on about how CRI and TLCI are just kind of outdated and irrelevant, you know, these days. Instead, I prefer, if manufacturers provide it, SSI, which is Spectral Similarity Index, which compares light sources to really well-known uh, other light sources like the sun. Unfortunately, SSI is not available in the specs, but instead we have my secondary preference, which is TM30. Now, TM30 is far more uh, modern and uh, accurate, I feel, compared to CRI and TLCI. It checks your light source against 99 colors instead of, um, compare that to say uh, CRI, which checks it against eight. So, you know, go figure. There are two main types of TM30 reading. There's RF, which is the similarity to that 99 color index that I mentioned, and RG, which compares the saturation versus that index. With RF 94 on average and RG 101 on average, definitely more reliable than CRI and TLCI. Like all sensible lights of this type, it has a bound mount, which opens up a world of possibilities when it comes to light modifiers and diffusers. Personally, I like the dome style diffusers, but there's just so many available now and for so little cash. One thing I love about the B300 is the fan noise or the lack thereof. The cooling system on this is really cool. Uh, cool air is drawn in through the sides and the rear and then warm air, you know, any kind of hot air is blasted out through the top and this just keeps it really quiet and, uh, you know, I love it. This is so damn quiet. I'm just gonna hold it and, um, and keep talking. And yeah, I can barely hear it. In fact, I've got other lights on in the room that I can hear more than this B300 right now. I cannot stand when lights are too loud. That whine that you can hear just inevitably makes it onto your audio track. And then, you know, then you have to spend time doing surgical uh, EQ and, and noise reduction, and I, I, d I don't want to do that. So, you know, quiet lights, they save you time. The B300 has 13 effects, such as welding, 
TV, lightning, and lots more. Moving on to build quality, and like the rest of the G and B series, you get quite a bit of plastic, but it's not badly made at all. And of course that does help to keep the weight down to a very lean for its power 2.57 kilos. I would put it in the prosumer category for build quality because of the plastic. To be considered a truly professional product, I think we'd need to see more metal in the construction. The mounting system of the B300, again, is plastic, but is very solid, unlike the budget video lights of yesteryear. You know, that kind of clunky yet flimsy style? You don't get a case for the B300, and that might have been nice, and this kind of tells me that Zhiyun think that this might be a light that people, uh, creators, may buy uh, for their studio and just set up and leave and not kind of lug around on jobs with them. And unfortunately that's not me. I, I'm lugging gear around all over the place. I've already used the B300 on multiple jobs. And what I end up doing is I, I use these, these cool uh, Tenba wraps. And um, I usually use two of them and wrap it together. And um, you can use these for anything, you know, camera bodies, lenses, you just kind of wrap it up, throw it in a camera bag and um, it does the job really well. Um, I recommend these if you don't have any, they're just, uh, I just find them, I'm using them uh, on every single job and I highly recommend them. I'll link them just if, if you're interested. Moving on to the user experience and the B300 is super simple. It has just two dials, one for brightness and one for color temperature. The only trouble with this of course is when you've got the B300 hoisted up high on a stand and need to tweak your settings. Now rather than lowering it and changing your settings and hoisting it back up, which you know, no one wants to do that, it just interrupts your, your flow and no, just no. Um, Zhiyun sell a little mini controller that you can plug in via uh, USB-C and that's an option, it's not particularly expensive. However, what I would recommend is Zhiyun's ZY Vega app. Now that app would be my recommendation because one, it's free. Two, it massively improves the user experience and three, you can connect multiple units. The only weird thing I noticed about the app is that the effects that I mentioned earlier, not accessible using the app, which, what? As for living with the B300, I'd say it's certainly bright enough to be um, a key light for most people, creators, that kind of thing. You know what, uh, it's high time I showed you what this thing can do. So you see in the color temperature range and the effects and that kind of just leaves the power. And here it is at 20% and then 40% and then 60% and this is already brighter than I would ever have this for my key light. 80% obviously brighter still and 100% getting rather hot. Moving on to value for money and alternatives and really the 300 watt video light is a crowded area of the market. I would say the ones I'm going to mention there are obvious differences between you know the with the build quality, uh, the connectivity and software side of things but they are all great value for money and honestly it's a great time to be buying this type of light. First up the obvious choice which is the Aperture 300X. It outputs around 7500 lux and is around 900 pounds at the time of filming. Not great news on those two things but it boasts an SSI rating of 85 so that's a good thing. I would say you get really professional build quality great SSI rating, but with underwhelming brightness for the price. Next we have the Small Rig 350B, which outputs 14,700 lux for around £850. There are no colour accuracy measurements worth looking at on Small Rig's website, but you get great output for a fair-ish price. Then there's the Amaran 300C, which outputs 9,370 lux at 5,600 Kelvin. It's around 550 pounds at the time of filming and has an SSI rating of up to 83, so really good. Being a full color light, you get quite a lot of features for your money, including decent SSI readings, but it's not the brightest. And then we have the Nanlite FC300B. This outputs 11,210 lux at 5600 Kelvin for only around 450 pounds and has an SSI rating of up to 82. Now this looks like a steal. It's a great price, powerful and fairly good color accuracy. I've not tried this, so I can't comment on the build, but I definitely want to. I might have to get this one in. And then a kind of obvious competitor, the Zhiyun G300, which I reviewed previously. 
it outputs up to 15,500 lux. Now this gives huge power and value for money. And obviously you must see my review to get the proper lowdown on this. Now I also can't help but compare this to Aperture's 300D Mark II, which if you remember, once upon a time, we all considered to be really super bright. It outputs 11,000 lux and is not by color, it's just daylight, 5600 Kelvin. Now the B300 is 10% brighter for quite literally half the cache. Now, yes, there are gonna be some build quality differences. I don't think the B300 is in any way comparing to the Aperture in that way. And there's also some differences in terms of the software uh, side of things. And I think the Aperture will also have uh, some battery options. So they may be deal breakers, but my God, the B300 offers a lot for the money. Now in my review of the larger B500 Lite, I was just as explicit about the differences in build quality. Uh, even though I'm not, I'm not a, a brand loyalist, I, you know, I own some Aperture Lights, I own some Zhiyun Lights. But I still had people commenting saying, but the Aperture have more professional build quality here. And I'm like, yeah, like, like I said in the video. But really, the truth is with all of these is you, you're not going to be going far wrong whichever one you choose. Anyway, now it's time for my pros and cons and I'll start with the pros because I'm a glass half full kind of guy. So this is an all-in-one unit with no separate power or controller unit. I see this as a pro. Also, the value is so good. I mean, it's really, really hard to fault the value for money. This is brighter than most of the other circa 300 watt competition. I really wouldn't blame people for thinking, hang on, do I really need all of the power that say an Aperture 600D gives me or a small rig 450B? I don't know. It's small, it's light, it's compact. These are all good things. I love the quiet operation, even at max power. Fan noise is just not an issue with this product. And then there's the ZY Vega app. I use this almost every single day. I mean, it is also necessary with a light like this where there's no separate control unit, but you know. And onto the cons, and for some people, the fact that this is an all-in-one unit, I think a lot of people do actually prefer a separate control unit, so you may see that as a con. I mentioned it before, the controls are a bit inaccessible when the light is high up on a stand, but you know, there are ways around that. You also get quite a bit of plastic, and you know, for some, it might not be quite hard wearing enough. I'd also add that there are no other power options. This is just a mains only unit, and that will be a consideration for some. Finally, to my opinion, and this is a brilliant value video light in a sea of competition, it's gonna be bright enough, I think, for most people as a primary key light in most situations. I mean, let's say you're a relatively new content creator and you go out and you snap up two of these. I'm not sure you'd really ever need to upgrade unless you wanted to go the route of having a full RGB functionality or if you needed an upgrade in something like build quality. Final thoughts and what a time to be buying video lights, eh? The sheer value that's available is just staggering. If you can live with the cons, and I would say they're not deal breaking cons, then I would say the B300 is an awesome choice. However, gun to my head, I'm choosing either the G300, or I'm waiting just for a little bit, I'm saving a little bit more cash, not much, and I'm going for the bigger and brighter B500. And that's just me, I just like more power. And that's it for this video, I just hope you found this video interesting and helpful. Do you agree? Do you own this? What did I miss? Definitely let me know, let's have a conversation down in the comments and I'm down there. Uh, I'll see you down there. I've now made hundreds of videos about videography and audio of which the algorithm has chosen this video for you to watch next and the one below is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys.